it's 2025 and people still love a good cancellation. Whether it be Netflix, which I canceled a long time ago, or a celebrity who's always going off the rails and offending people. But people like to pretend that certain skincare ingredient combinations cancel each other out. Like this plus this equals negative results. And it can make things very confusing. Spend any amount of time online, chances are you're going to come in contact with some sort of skincare myth that leaves you so confused you're standing on your head and waiting 45 minutes after applying your face serum because Susie What's Her Face on TikTok told you that was the only way to do it. Well, there are certain skincare ingredient pairings that can be more irritating, potentially cause problems for you. So what could possibly go wrong when number one, you decide you're going to pair your retinol and your vitamin C together in the same routine. <gasps> Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Okay, for the most part, it is recommended to apply retinol at night in your nighttime skincare routine and to apply your vitamin C in the morning before sunscreen. Vitamin C is an antioxidant. It's gonna help you with defending against oxidative stress from the environmental aggressors, ultraviolet radiation, pollution, infrared. Retinol works to help normalize skin cell turnover, may help reduce inflammation, improve collagen production, and it has a better chance of getting into the skin as you sleep at night due to some of the changes in skin physiology that happen when we sleep and it's probably a good time to use it. Plus, older forms of prescription topical retinoids were vulnerable to degradation in daylight. So the th thought process was that if you wear these during the day, they might degrade. Well, eh, eh, that's kind of, you know, not necessarily true per se, depending on what it is you're using. But all of that to say, retinol at night, vitamin C in the morning. But if you were to apply them together, you rogue deviant you, they're not going to cancel each other out per se. What you can run into, particularly with ascorbic acid, which is the active form of vitamin C, the most active, tends to be a product that is going to be very acidic. If you put that on and you apply your retinoid and you're new to using retinoids or retinol cosmetic versions, this can be very irritating. It can cause a lot of dryness, peeling, irritation, sensitivity. For me personally, it's odd. I had no problem ever tolerating a topical retinoid, but throw a vitamin C serum into the mix and many times, although not always, they cause me irritation. Yes, yes, they do. So using them together in the same routine might be too much for you. It might be too much for you and it may not just timing wise, chronology wise, as far as what the different ingredients are aiming to accomplish for you, they, it might not make sense. The ingredient might work better for what it's intended to be doing when applied in the morning in the case of ascorbic acid, at night in the case of of retinol, but they don't actually cancel each other out. And spoiler alert, there are actually products out there that are formulated with both ingredients in one product, and they can definitely work together in the same product. Adapalene, a topical retinoid, for example, actually can be used during the day. So if you've been advised to use it that way, don't feel as though if you put your vitamin C serum on first, it's going to cancel out the adapalene or that you need to have some sort of special way of layering them together. You don't. Put the vitamin C on, put the retinol on, then put the sunscreen on once everything's dry. There's no clock involved. You don't need to set a timer in these routines, okay? That, that's just making things overly complicated. Pairing number two that can backfire is, again, lots of nuance, mostly caveats, okay? It's gonna be benzoyl peroxide plus your topical retinoid applied together. Benzoyl peroxide might actually degrade the retinol, depending on how the retinol is formulated. So retinol or retinaldehyde, these are cosmetic ingredients where it's up to the manufacturer to formulate a product that is stable and there's a lot of heterogeneity out there but if you're talking a prescription retinoid like tretinoin, triferritine, tazeratine, adapalene, many of these might be unstable in the presence of benzoyl peroxide namely older variants of tretinoin. Adapalene however is stable in the presence of benzoyl peroxide and is more than fine to apply at the same time. In fact there's even a prescription topical that combines both benzoyl peroxide and adapalene together in one topical to cut down on the number of things you have to use and that is called epidura. So you can use benzoyl peroxide and adapalene together in the same routine, put them on at night and get the, get what you need out of them. Yeah, they, they can work well and benzoyl peroxide and adapalene together work really well actually for acne. I mean that is like the most solid evidence-based over-the-counter acne regimen that you could get. It can be super drying, super irritating, but if you go with a 
lower percentage benzoyl peroxide, like 2.5% micronized formula, um, much less likely to be irritating, although it's still possible, but can be equally effective as a higher percentage. You know, you can apply adapalene at night and benzoyl peroxide morning and night. You actually can apply adapalene during the day though. Adapalene does not degrade in the presence of light um, and you could wear it during the day. The third mambo combo that we need to set the record straight once and for all, because a lot of people still believe this, that you should never use vitamin C and niacinamide together. And that's false. Those two ingredients are more than fine to use together in the same routine. For example, if you use a vitamin C serum in the morning and then you apply your sunscreen on over it and the sunscreen has niacinamide, as many do, whoopee do. Perfectly fine, not gonna cause any issues, not gonna degrade the vitamin C or anything of that sort. So you are free to use the two together. And in my opinion, niacinamide does a lot, a lot of the same things that vitamin C does without the stability penetration issues. And for me personally, is a lot less irritating. So I don't even use vitamin C serums in my regular routine unless I'm testing one out for the purposes of review, which spoiler alert, I am currently testing one out right now. And it's not causing me any irritation, but whether or not it's actually getting in and boosting my collagen, we will never know. We'll never know because I'm not going to biopsy my face. <laughs> every, I'd be doing that every five minutes. Okay, here's another mambo combo that you want to be careful of. And that is pairing your retinol or retinaldehyde or prescription form of retinoid, tretinoin, tazeratine, triferritine, and dapline. Pairing any of those with a chemical exfoliant. Alpha hydroxy acids like glycolic, lactic, mandelic, or salicylic acid. Now you can pair these together, like, but it can be very irritating. So when you're starting out using tretinoin, it might be a good idea not to apply these together at the same time. But if you're a tretinoin champ, you've been using it for a long time, it doesn't cause you any problems. Absolutely, you can use these other chemical exfoliants along with tretinoin. Tretinoin is not a chemical exfoliant, by the way, but it may reduce the need for a chemical exfoliant. But you may also still benefit from a chemical exfoliant, even a chemical exfoliant used twice a day. And so, yeah, if that's the case for you, then you can use those ingredients with the topical retinoid or cosmetic version retinol retinaldehyde. You can use them together, all right, as long as it doesn't cause excessive dryness or irritation. But if you're new to starting like a topical vitamin A active, we'll call them, whether it be the cosmetic stuff or the prescription stuff, then yeah, you might want to be careful with the alpha hydroxy acids or salicylic acid using it along with it because it will make, in many cases, that initial dryness and irritation stage perhaps more aggressive than had you not used those together at the same time. But the together at the same time thing also is not necessarily even that high tech because you could use it the following morning, but it's not as though using it the following morning completely negates the increased irritation either because the skin is still sensitive. It's going to be sensitive the next day. I mean, the process of the retinoid causing dryness and irritation, it's around the clock kind of a thing. And so the following morning, you're not somehow more scot-free of the dryness and irritation. So you, you still can get dryness and irritation regardless of the approach. So it may be better in the first couple of weeks of using a topical retinoid while you get used to it, because it takes a couple of weeks to get used to the dryness, the peeling and irritation, especially the prescription stuff or adapalene. You might just want to lay off of these ingredients for a while to really just focus on the topical retinoid. And only once you are accustomed to it, you're doing well with it, then bring back the alpha hydroxy acid or the salicylic acid, if you even need them, okay? If you even need them, because like I said, topical retinol, retinaldehyde, tretinoin, triferritine, tazeratine, adapalene, all of those, they help normalize skin cell turnover. So the top outermost layer, the stratum corneum becomes compact and smooth, less stuff for you to worry about exfoliating. And for a lot of people, their skin becomes smooth, they have less pore clogging once they've been on a retinoid for a while, and they don't necessarily need to use those other ingredients, although some people still benefit from them, especially people who deal with acne, they might benefit from including salicylic acid. And in some cases, combining um, a topical retinoid, the alpha hydroxy acid lactic acid may add additional benefit for improving collagen production, or adding in glycolic acid may add an additional benefit for clearing hyperpigmentation. But for other people, it's like, I'm getting what I need out of just the topical retinoid. I don't necessarily need to add in these chemical exfoliants as well. So that's where the nuance comes in. It's very individualized. What works for one person won't work for another. All right, and then last but not least is a pairing that I never recommend anyone to do. And that is mixing stuff into other stuff 
before putting it on your skin. This can backfire because especially when we're talking about active ingredients, they need to be formulated with intention. And so once you take that product that is formulated with intention to spread on the skin, to get into the skin, to deliver the active evenly on the surface of the skin, once you take that formulation and you alter it by mixing it in with another product and subsequently altering that other product, all bets are off. All bets are off. This can alter the preservative system. This can alter the stability of the ingredients by altering things like pH, by introducing things that might destabilize the stable formulation. Not to mention, it does not guarantee even distribution throughout the product when you add stuff in. So you can get hot spots where you have a more concentrated amount of the active ingredient and other areas in that, that cream that you've mixed, mixy mixy together where there's no drugs. So you get under application in some areas. And ultimately that can lead to poor performance, suboptimal results, and increased irritation in possible hot spot areas where you had too much of the active ingredient. And it's especially important not to do this with sunscreen. Never, ever, ever mix anything into your sunscreen. Don't do it. It alters the entire formula and can significantly compromise its ability to perform as a sunscreen. Sunscreen is a very, very challenging thing to formulate so that it's a product that spreads on the skin and offers an even layer of protection. Adding stuff in completely changes the sunscreen, completely changes it. It becomes unreliable. And that's the last thing you want to sacrifice is good sun protection because if you don't have good and consistent sun protection, all these other things kind of end up, you know, diminishing returns in the long run. So don't mix stuff into your sunscreen ever. <laughs> but I also don't recommend, for example, mixing your tretinoin into your favorite body cream and making a retinoid lotion. No, just buy a body lotion with retinol in it um, or just apply your tretinoin directly to body sites. Uh, that way you get that even application that you need to actually take advantage of that active ingredient. You don't end up wasting it. Some people want to mix these things together immediately before applying, but I've seen a lot of people like on TikTok, of course, who will take their entire tube of prescription tretinoin and add it to a whole bottle of lotion, put the cap back on that lotion and be like, look, I've got a tretinoin lotion now. No, you don't. You have a whole mess there. You have a whole mess there and I don't recommend doing that. We're talking about skincare today, but I see a lot of people do this kind of thing with shampoo bottles. There's this trend and I was just looking on looking at the top trending beauty videos on TikTok and I saw another one of these where they take a bottle it's usually herbal essence shampoo of all shampoos I mean I, I I've used that one in the past but that seems to be the favorite herbal essence or Pantene um, another brand I love take a good product a good shampoo with Pantene and they go into their kitchen and they add some whole rosemary sprigs and a whole cinnamon stick it's like do, what, what are you doing what are you doing uh, contamination station there. No, 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 no. You're going to mess everything up. Rosemary oil uh, by itself is a remedy for hair loss. Little research to actually back that up. And the research that we do have is of poor quality. Shows that it's about as good as 2% minoxidil, which spoiler alert, isn't that great. But then you're taking the actual, not a, not a rosemary essential oil. Another thing I don't recommend mambo comboing, mixing into stuff as a side note. Same issues there um, as with mixing anything into other products. But when you take the whole rosemary, you're not getting hardly any of the actual rosemary oil. That's a concentrated essential oil. Um, so you're not you're not really getting that. And the cinnamon, I don't even know what's going on there either. Uh, but I don't recommend doing that because especially a shampoo bottle, just think about it. You're going to keep that in your shower or in your bathroom. You're going to be using it over and over and over again. And there are preservatives in the shampoo that are intended to keep the product shelf stable so that the ingredients remain functional as the way that they should. But once you add all this junk in your shampoo bottle, that preservative system is completely altered and it can compromise the performance of the shampoo so it doesn't shampoo properly. And it opens up a window for contamination in a bathroom, in a shower. Um, you know, that's, that's a much greater risk. Mold, for example. Yeah, that's gonna get funky, gonna get moldy. I don't recommend doing that. 
All right, y'all, so those are five pairings that can be problematic, okay? It doesn't mean in some of these cases that they must never, ever, ever be combined, but just be aware of the pluses and minuses of combining. The only never ever is don't ever mix different products together before applying them to your skin because it really can backfire. Let me know in the comments though, have you heard any other combinations of skincare ingredients that you should never mix together? Also, let me know in the comments, would you like me to do a video of skincare ingredient pairings that lead to better results? But if you guys enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.